Hey everybody, welcome to Video Note 6.1. It's chemical reactions time. So um, we're going to be doing these three things. All right. Um, so I'll need you to read chapter six in your book. And I just read it and there's a lot of cool pictures. So make sure you do that. Okay. Make sure to read chapter six. Also, do this. Put that in your notes. Okay. So, hey, taking us back to unit one. Wow. What are some signs of chemical change? Well, um, if you get an unexpected color change, like, whoa, that turned yellow. Also, that's a precipitate. Um, you get some gas, ooh, ooh, and you get some odor, ooh. And uh, so those are some signs of chemical change. So keep that in mind. So what is a chemical equation? It's a chemical sentence that uses symbols to represent a chemical reaction. So look at all that sugar down there. What happens to sugar? Well, it um, gets made, not what happens to it, sugar gets made in photosynthesis. All right, so this is a chemical reaction that symbolizes what goes on in photosynthesis. You got some carbon dioxide and some water and plants make their own sugar and give off oxygen. Okay, this is representing that. So, okay. So, in a chemical reaction, you got reactants and you got products. So, reactants are substances that are used up in the reaction. They're the starting material. All right, they're what you put in. Products are substances that are made in the reaction. And I like to remember that the arrow points to products. Uh, so, hey, what are the reactants in this reaction? Label them. Hopefully, put this example, but these are reactants. Right. And these are products. What's cool about it is they have names, okay? This reactant is carbon dioxide, okay? Hey, that's a covalent compound because it's two nonmetals. This reactant, ooh, is water. Also covalent, two nonmetals. And then this reactant, or product, sorry, is oxygen. All right. And that's sugar. We're not going to use the chemical name for it, though. Okay, so hey, what kind of symbols are going to be seen in a chemical reaction? Well, please, please write these down and maybe put a blank in your data table so that, um, not data table, but in your little chart of what the translations are so that you can um, add some to it when we do notes in class. So this you will see in a chemical reaction to mean gas. And I put dot, dot, dot because usually you say, oxygen gas or um, hydrogen gas. This is a symbol L for liquid, and you would say liquid water or liquid hexane. All right, this is a symbol for solid, and usually it comes before something you're describing. And this is a symbol for aqueous. Please remember that aqueous means dissolved in water. Okay, what's the diff between liquid and aqueous? What's the diff? All right, liquid is the state of matter of a substance that has already melted, okay? So liquid is something that is melted and it's flowing, okay? Aqueous is when you take something and dissolve it, kind of like sugar in water is aqueous. Salt in water is aqueous. If the plus sign's on the left side of the arrow, the reactant side of the arrow, it means reacts with. If the plus sign is on the product side of the arrow, it means and. And the arrow means to produce, or yields, or yields, or gives, or forms, or gives. All right. So we're going to be interpreting. Okay, so let's put this into words. 2CaOS plus H2OG arrow 2CaOH2Aq. All right, so we need to translate it. So this is saying solid calcium oxide. Hey, I know it's just called calcium oxide because it's a metal and a non-metal. Do we need a Roman? No. Reacts with, that's the plus sign, hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas. All right, notice the word gas came after hydrogen. To produce the arrow. To produce um, aqueous calcium. Oxide. So see all that time we spent, I'm sorry, I said oxide, but hey, guess what? It's hydroxide. Hydroxide. Okay. Notice that um, the word aqueous came before, solid comes before, gas usually comes after. 
Try it again. Oh, look, it's solid copper oxide. Wait a second. Copper's a Roman. Now, how do I know it's a Roman numeral two? Because oxide's a negative one. Hey, what does the plus mean? Please say reacts with. Please say reacts with. Reacts with liquid water. Now, we can call water water when it's liquid. We call it ice when it's solid. To produce. Where did I get the to produce? To produce. Hero. Aqueous. Copper. Hydroxide. Why do I just call it copper hydroxide? Because it's ionic. And But then copper's Roman. And since this is two OHs, then copper must have been a plus two. So I have to put a Roman numeral two. All right. Hey, we just translated. Hey, we know another language. Woohoo. All right. Hey, what if we have the words? Hydrogen gas. Hmm. Hydrogen gas reacts with, like we could translate above, oxygen gas. Hey, what am I doing with those? I'm putting twos, and I'll tell you why in a second. To produce a row, water. Okay, when we say water, we got to go L for liquid. Okay. Now, you are probably noticing that something's missing here, all right? So how can we have two H's on this side, two H's, two O's on that side, but only one O on that side? Something's missing. We lost an O. We'll take care of it in a second um, after we practice this one. Solid magnesium. Mg is magnesium. Solid reacts with plus oxygen gas again. Well, to produce aero solid magnesium oxide. Okay, so Mg is a plus two, oxide's a negative two, MgO. So all that formula right in practice we've been doing, we have to keep doing it correctly. All right, and so then um, I'm gonna put a two there and a two there. That's called balancing, but I never balance until after I have the correct formulas. All right, hey, what's this balancing stuff? Well, I played a little song for you that you might notice. We're going to talk about a law. We already talked about it, but law of conservation of matter. Hello, John Dalton. You use this. You use this law, and you taught us. John Dalton, and he really taught us. So that was, oh, name that tune, name that, uh, that band, that'd be fun. But the law always wins. What's the law? Law of conservation of matter. So you can't create or destroy a matter. So the reactance is going to equal the mass of the products. Why? Because if you have an atom on the left, it can rearrange and form a new bond, but you better be able to find it on the other side. So it's the law of conservation of mass. So it's like balancing a seesaw. Look, these two atoms are on the left side. You better be able to find them. Now, of course, they're um, the Mickey Mouse ears on a new molecule. One purple on this side, one purple on that side. You better be able to find them because they can't be created or destroyed. They're just rearranging. You better be able to find them. Here's C3H8. One, two, three. That's three C's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight H's. They're bonded together to make this whole thing. All right. This is five O2s. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so how many O's? 10 O's total on that side. So let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 O's total on this side. The O's are balanced. The H's on this side, there's eight of them. There's eight of them on this side as well. Eight H's. You better be able to find them. Every atom, both sides. So the left side of the equation, the aerolist reactants. Reactants. F, E, and S. The right side of the arrow has the products, and then we have an Fe and an S, one over here, one over here, one over there, one over there. They're all there, okay? So that's balance. So if you see a subscript, it's telling you how many of that atom are in that particular compound or molecule, all right? So there's two C's and six H's. So let's find the C's. Oh, look, two C's. One, two, three, four, five, six H's. But this is one whole thing. It's a compound. It's um, called ethane. Okay. You have to be able to count them, even if you can't see them, by using subscripts. 
Okay, so hey, let's practice. Hey, it's carbon dioxide. How do I know? Because it's two nonmetals, so you name it by using the prefixes. All right, how many carbon atoms? Just one. How many oxygen atoms? Two. Look, it's an ionic compound, ammonium carbonate. All right, how do you know? Because it's ionic, you name it. First thing, second thing. Okay, how many nitrogen atoms? This two goes for everything inside. All right, so there are two ends. That two goes for everything inside. Oh, and now it asks about oxygen. Oh, wait, a second. who put that? This should say hydrogen because oxygen's later. All right, so how many hydrogen atoms? Two times four is eight hydrogen atoms. How many carbons? One. How many oxygens? Three. Okay, so NH4 is in this compound two times to cancel out the charge on carbonate. So that means there's four eight hydrogens, two nitrogens, one carbon, three oxygens. Okay. Oh, look at this. It's my favorite potassium permanganate. How many potassiums? One. How many manganese? One. How many oxygens? Four. Okay. So if you have the chemical formula of a substance, the subscripts tell you how many things are in there. Okay. Now, in a balanced equation, there's things called coefficients, and they're multipliers. They're put in front of compounds that tell you how many times that whole thing is there. Okay, it could be in front of a, an element too. So, all right, now there's no number here, but if this is here and there's no number in front, you know it's there at least one time. You do not have to write in ones, but you have to know they're there. Okay, so let's try to do this with um, coefficients. Now, carbon dioxide it has one carbon and two oxygen, but two carbon dioxides means this two of them. So, we actually have two carbons and Multiply to get four oxygens. All right, here we go. This one's a little tougher. What does three of these mean? Well, you can write it out if you need to to get you started. But three NH4CO3s means three ammonium carbonates. One, two, three. So how many N's? Well, two, four, six. All right, six N's. So two times three is six. One of these has eight hydrogens, but there's one, two, three of them, so we're at 20, sorry, hydrogen. Who does that? 24 hydrogens, all right? So eight, eight, and eight is 24. How many carbons? Three. And how many oxygens? Three, six, nine. There's a train again. All right. Six KMNO4s, right? We're going to hear another train whistle because they got a blue three times. Six Ks, six MNs. There we go, 24 oxygen. All right, so let's balance these. Now, when you're looking at things to count how many, you're taking an inventory of what you have. So let's count. We have two H's over here, two H's over there. That's balanced. That's done because the arrow is the equal sign. All right, we have two O's on this side, but only one O on that side. So how can we change that? Well, we have the correct formula, so we can't change those. So we need to use coefficients or multipliers. Now, if two oxygen on this side, I want two, so I put a two there. But that two goes for everything behind it. So now I have four H's and two O's. So O's are good, but now I need two there to have, and then we can take inventory. Four H's, four H's. Two O's, two O's. They're equal, okay? All right, N2, N1. So you can do this if you want. List the atoms. Two N's, one N right now. Two H's on the left, three H's on the right. That's not balanced. So what do we do? We're putting coefficients. So now if I put, uh, I need more H's on this side, but I can't change the identity of NH3, but I could put a two in front. So that means two N's, but it also means six H's. What the? I have to go back to this side, and if I want six H's, I have to put three there, three times two is six. All right, now, you don't have to write all of this out. You can balance by inspection. And keep going back and forth and counting. We'll keep practicing. All right. Um, just to refresh your memory, there's seven elements that are called diatomic. So that when they're by themselves in a chemical reaction as an element, you always have to put a two next to them. Memorize this word. Nof cool brie. All right. Nof cool brie. Now, um, they always pair up. You should also know they're all gases except for bromine, which is a liquid, and iodine, which is a, so which is a solid. So we could say this, h 2 gas all right but if we say br2 don't forget the two 
It's a liquid. They're desperate for company, so they hang out with each other, make little molecules. Hey, it's a periodic table. Whoa. And, um, there's seven of these that are called diatomic. And if you look here on the periodic table, element number seven happens to be nitrogen. Notice what word we have here. Nof, cool, brr. Oh, look at that number it makes. Starts with seven, makes a seven. Points over to hydrogen. Nof, cool, brr. <sighs> Super seven. Don't forget them. Okay. So, hey, it's time to review. Please read the How to Write and Balance Equation section on page 153. It gives you step-by-step -step go authors of our book how to do it. Just also review the numbers in front are multipliers called coefficients. And the numbers behind are subscripts. Okay. Coefficients. All right. But you don't have to put in ones. Subscripts help us identify their, their identity identity of the substance and then behind we would put um parentheses to tell us the state of matter o2 is a gas hydrogen is a gas the left side are the reactants the right side are the products arrow the arrow points to products in the chemical equation don't forget to read chapter six look at the pictures do the self check and put page uh page number 6.3 c from page 156 in your notes we can do it now, all right? So to take you out, don't try to fight the law, because it'll win. Just make sure to balance your equations.